Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gordon Frayne and today we're back with another Bitcoin and crypto weekly market update this time for Friday, August 9th, 2024. And we're going to be going through the markets for the past week. As always, if you enjoy the content, please make sure to smash that thumbs up button below. Hit that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to smash that bell notification icon as well if you want to get notified about similar videos. And don't forget to grab your free copy of The Rise of Bitcoin. It's going to be linked in the description below. And let's get into the video. So it has been a bit of a crazy week in the Bitcoin and crypto markets, especially since this time last Friday, we saw a big uh, amount of fear, uncertainty and doubt over the weekend with markets dumping on a macro level, uh, the stock market and the crypto markets on the Sunday and Monday time frame with the Japanese yen carry trade beginning to unwind. We saw a little bit of hysteria in the markets earlier in the week with Bitcoin dipping all the way down to the $49,000 level. We have seen a very good bounce, especially in the past 48 hours. Bitcoin is back up above the $60,000 level. We're currently sitting at $60,170 here on Friday, August 9th. Ethereum is back above $2,500. BNB has usurped Solana once again as the third largest blockchain, back above $505 and a $73 billion market cap. And Solana sitting as the fourth largest blockchain at a price just above $151 and just over $70 billion in terms of overall market cap. If we look at the overall market cap for the entire crypto space over the past week, we can see just how crazy this week has been. We went from a market cap of about $2.25 trillion last Friday, dropping all the way down to this $1.8 trillion level before once again bouncing back up and currently sitting at this $2.1 trillion level. So definitely down a little bit over the past week, uh, down from $2.25 trillion to $2.1, but a big dip happening here um, in that Monday, Tuesday time frame before jumping back up to where we are today. If we look at the biggest gainers and losers of the past week, we can see that SUI is actually up 32%, largely driven by the announcement that Grayscale are introducing both BitTensor and SUI Trust products. So lots of bullish sentiment around SUI as a very scalable layer one solution. And because of that news, SUI is the largest gainer over the past seven days out of the top 100 cryptos. We've also got Helium up 29%, Celestia is up 13%, BitTensor also up 11% on the back of that news. Kronos is up 11%, Toncoin back up 5%, Ripple itself up about 4.5%, and Quant up just under 2%. The rest of the market for the top 100 coins is in the red over the past seven day time frame. Some of the biggest losers being Lido down 25%, Maker down 20%, Mantra down about 17%, Near Protocol down 15%, Phantom down 15% as well, ICP down about 14%, Ave down 13%, Injective down 13%, Pepe down 13%, Casper down 13%, and then the likes of Bonk, Ordi down about 11 12% as well. So there has definitely been more blood on the streets this past week than gainers, but some very good buying opportunities presented over the past seven days. If you had some capital on hand to deploy. Of course, this is not financial advice, but we did see a pretty violent bounce in terms of price action for Bitcoin, Solana, and some of the large caps getting back up after that initial drop on Monday, Tuesday, earlier this week. We mentioned the Grayscale products for BitTensor and Sui, and if we jump into the Bitcoin dominance, we can see that we're currently sitting at a dominance of about 57.62%. We're on the daily chart here. If we just zoom in a little bit, we can see that over the past week, Bitcoin dominance has continued to rise. Again, we've been discussing this every week on the channel. You can see that we've had very strong Bitcoin dominance over the course of um, the past number of months. And even if we zoom out um, to the weekly chart, we'll see that really since the kind of beginning of 2023, Bitcoin dominance has been on a very, very strong uptrend and it's not really showing any signs of breaking to the downside just yet. 
Typically, this would indicate that we are not yet ready for an altcoin season. Are we going to see an altcoin season similar to what we saw back in the 2021 cycle when we saw Bitcoin dropping in terms of dominance here? Um, this is when we really saw the altcoin markets really kicking off here in the 2021 time frame as Bitcoin dominance continued to drop. We're still on a steady rise, not showing any signs of breaking down just yet. So it might be a few more months before we see alts really start to break out. Speaking of altcoins, jumping over to the altcoin season index. Here we've got a Bitcoin strong month. Of course, the Bitcoin dominance that we just alluded to means that we're seeing more capital um, holding strong in Bitcoin rather than going into the altcoin market. Top 50 performers over the past month, we can see that Bitcoin itself is up about 4.4% on the past month. So despite all of the hysteria earlier in the week with the market drop that we've discussed, Bitcoin is still up 4.4% over the past 30 days. We do have some outliers and some very good performers here in the top 50 coins with Ripple of all coins leading the way up 31% over the past month. Sui is up 17%, Tau is up about 14%, XLM up 14%, Whiff and Kronos up about 10, 11%, Solana is also up about 8.6%. Um, and then we've still got Ethereum down given the fact that we've seen the ETF launch for Ethereum, representing kind of similar behavior that we saw for Bitcoin in the immediate aftermath of the Bitcoin ETF launching, we did see a drop in prices before it began to really take off. ETH is down 16% month over month. So again, good buying opportunity if you're buying the dip there, but it might be another few weeks before we really see Ethereum start to bounce back with consistent ETF inflows obviously most of the chart here is in red for the top 50 coins over the past month with all of the bloodshed earlier in this week fetch leading the way down 28 percent uniswap down about 25 percent arbitrum down 23 percent link down 20 percent matic down 18 percent so lots of red on the charts if you're bullish on any of these specific tokens it is a good buying opportunity again this is not financial advice Jumping over to the narratives index, we can see here that narrative year-to-date performance. Actually, we've now got derivatives as the best performing narrative ahead of memes. This has been memes thus far for the entire year-to-date performance on which narratives has been performing better. Derivatives now have seemed to overtake memes in terms of the narrative that is performing best year-to-date. We've also got memes in second place with real-world assets in third place. The Bitcoin narrative, liquid staking, derivatives, and privacy in a close second, third, fourth, fifth. However, if we do look over to the volumes per narrative, we can see the volume per narrative is still leading the way for the meme coin narrative. We've seen huge amounts of capital inflow into meme coins on Solana and Ethereum leading the way. And again, outshining most of the other narratives here when it comes to the sheer amount of volume going through meme coins. Always worth keeping an eye on the different narratives and what narratives your assets are a part of. Jumping over to the Bitcoin spot ETF tracker for the US, we can still see that BlackRock are leading the charge with 347,000 Bitcoin now being held by BlackRock as the leading spot ETF issuer. Grayscale continues to bleed over the course of the past week. Fidelity is um, currently standing at about 176,000. And if we jump over to the flows chart to look at this very briefly, we did see net inflows for August 8 of over 3,300 Bitcoin being purchased by the ETFs with IBIT um, leading the charge there. But if we zoom into the flows over time, we can see that given the market drop earlier in the week, we did see two consecutive days of very strong outflows. Last Friday, we did also see a strong outflow day as well. But in the past 48 hours, you can see that we're beginning to pick up again with BlackRock buying the dip along with the other ETF issuers buying the dip in prices over the course of the past few days and starting to reaccumulate for the next leg up. So it would seem this local bottom is in and the ETF issuers are coming back in to swoop in and buy those Bitcoin prices now that we're back 
at the mid to high 50 levels and even breaking 60,000 US dollars once again. So very interesting stuff with the ETFs. We're continuing to see very strong inflows and looking at the cycle low multiple index. What we're looking at here is the current cycle trajectory for the next 12 to 18 months in the aftermath of the halving. So the halving date for this current era is marked for day zero here in the middle of the chart. And we're also seeing a representation of the performance for Bitcoin in the lead up to and aftermath of the three previous Bitcoin halving events. So the blue line on the chart represents the price action of Bitcoin in the lead up to and aftermath of the 2012 halving, the orange line showing us performance after the 2016 halving, and the green line showing us performance after the 2020 halving, with the red line showing us our current trajectory for this era in the aftermath of the 2024 halving, which took place in April of this year. So again, we are relatively on track, similar to what we've seen for the other cycles. We did have a little bit of a dip and bounce here in the past week or so, as you can see on the chart here with the Bitcoin price getting down to that 49K level. But if we just zoom out and look at the bigger picture, it's always important to keep that in mind because we do typically see Bitcoin rallying in the 12 to 18 months after the halving event due to the supply shock that it causes with new all-time highs being put in in those 12 to 18 month time periods. So zooming out and looking at this on a macro level, it's going to be a very exciting 12 to 18 months from today. And again, previous price action is not always indicative of future price performance, but if we think about the supply shock that the halving event causes and the demand that we're seeing from ETFs continuing very consistently over the course of the past number of months, I think we're in for an exciting 12 months ahead. Jumping over to real world assets, we can see very briefly here that we're continuing to see very strong um, positive inflows and um, more and more assets being tokenized on the blockchain. We can see BlackRock's Biddle Fund on Ethereum here has grown from about $50 million back in March to over uh, 513 million US dollars now today. So we're seeing increased amounts of treasuries being tokenized on the blockchain and a number of other asset managers are following suit. So again, this real world asset tokenization narrative is the second or third best performing narrative of 2024 thus far. And we're seeing the capital flowing into these markets as a result. We're also keeping an eye on uh, stable coins and commodities is a new one here in the RWA Dot XYZ index, we can keep track of all the action happening regarding um, asset tokenization on the blockchain. And again, 2024 thus far has been a very, very strong year for the tokenization of stablecoin assets like USDT, like USDC, and all of these other stable coins, the likes of uh, PayPal have launched in the past few months. We're seeing huge amounts of uh, tokenization for stablecoin assets up 1.93% from 30 days ago, currently sitting at about 164 billion US dollars. And we can see the different chains that all this action is happening on, Ethereum leading the way, but Tron, Binance, Solana, Base, Avalanche, Arbitrum, and Near all contributing to what's going on from an asset tokenization standpoint on chain. So always worth keeping an eye on this and lots of exciting stuff going on in this space. Jumping over to the Artemis terminal, we can also take a brief look at the on-chain metrics for the past seven days. Near Protocol and Solana leading the way in terms of daily active addresses. So again, these two have been uh, contributing most in terms of daily active addresses with Polygon, Sui, Ton, Ethereum, Aptos and Avalanche following up from them. Daily transactions though goes to Solana by a long way, over 31 million daily transactions happening here very consistently every single day over the course of the past week. Near Protocol is in second place with only 6.5 million and then Polygon, Sui, Aptos, Ethereum, um, all above a million to kind of three to four million do, uh, range in terms of daily transactions. If we look at total value locked, we can still see Ethereum leads the way by a long way, but Solana in second. And then we've got DEX trading volumes where Ethereum has been leading the way over the past week, but we can see Solana is 
uh, fighting here for getting that bigger share of the overall decentralized exchange trading volumes than we can see in terms of fees. We have interesting data here for um, Ethereum spiking up with fees. Lots of people rushing to get capital out of the markets earlier in the week on Monday, Tuesday, when we had that volatility happening uh, with the Japanese yen carry trade unwind. And again, lots of stuff happening um, from a fees and revenue perspective with Solana and Ethereum really leading the way here. Then we've got Ton Avalanche, Near Protocol, Polygon, Aptos and Sui following up the rear. So uh, finally, we're going to look at the Fed interest rate for Fed Watch. What we're expecting now with the September FOMC meeting is going to be a rate cut in the region of um, somewhere probably around 25 basis points. Uh, we're estimating or we're having a 46.5% estimate that we're going to be having a 25 basis point cut versus a 50 basis point cut um, is actually now the favorite at 53.5% um, of people believing we're going to be getting a 50 basis point rate cut. Again, much of the panic that we saw earlier in the week with the Japanese yen carry trade unwind has spurred people into wanting a larger rate cut by the time we have the September 18th FOMC meeting. But this remains to be seen. I think, you know, whatever way you split it, we're, we're definitely getting a rate cut from what you can read in the data here. It's just a matter of whether it is 25 basis points or 50 basis points. So that remains to be seen, but I think we have to wait till September 18th to see all of that. And again, just zooming out and looking at the macro picture here, when we saw increased liquidity in the system, thanks to rate cuts and thanks to money printing back in 2020 with the whole COVID situation, we did have um, a huge surge in the amount of capital and global liquidity. Um, and This is actually representing US domestic liquidity on this chart, but we do know what happened with the Bitcoin price in the aftermath of all of this printing and more capital and more liquidity in the system. So this is where we are right now in the current trajectory as we move through uh, the beginning and second half of 2024 in terms of the macro liquidity cycle. We are seeing more liquidity beginning to uh, come into the system from a US perspective and uh, European banks have been cutting interest rates over the past few months and so have China. So the interest rate cut with uh, the Fed coming in September most likely is going to spur more liquidity into the system. And from previous liquidity cycles, we can see what happened with the price of Bitcoin in the aftermath of all of that. So that is This Week in Bitcoin. As always, if you enjoy the content, please make sure to smash that thumbs up button below. Hit that subscribe button as well. And if you want to get notified about similar videos, smash the bell notification icon on your way out the door. And don't forget to grab your free copy of The Rise of Bitcoin. It is my gift to you. Grab it while it's free. And we will catch you in the next one.